Hi, and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host today, Digest, and today we should be looking at Razer by Native Instruments. Razer is an additive synthesizer that runs within Native Instruments Reactor, either the full version or the free version. You are able to download the free version from their website, which I'll link below. In brief, additive synthesis is where the sound is constructed from the ground up from partials, instead of starting with a complex waveform like in subtractive synthesis. Each partial is firing in parallel, however changing in different frequencies and amplitudes over time, allowing for a clear and precise sound which can be modulated in many different ways. The sound engine in Razer is made up of 320 partials, which means each time you play a note, 320 sine waves are playing, each with different frequencies and amplitudes to make up the overall sound. What is interesting about Razer is the fact that the built-in filters and effects, such as stereo imaging and reverb, are not effects added on to the end of the signal chain. They are in fact made by manipulating the individual partials that make up the sound. This makes Razer different to the other synthesizers out there. This is just a short overlook of the plugin. For a much in-depth explanation, please read your manual that comes with Razer. First things first, you need to select an instrument track, like I have already done in Logic, and we need to open Reactor. For this demonstration, I am just using the Reactor player, which is free. Once Reactor is opened, we need to go to the Ensemble section, select Razor, and drag it over into the main section. It should take a little while to load. Once it's loaded, you should hopefully have something that looks like this. We then need to initialize the patch. You do this by going to Aerosmith and init. This is a blank patch which you can start to create your own sounds from. At the top of the plugin, we have our global controls. We have a mono and poly switch, single trigger switch, a quality control, which when set to low will use less CPU, medium will use a little bit more, and high will use more. Obviously, the higher quality, the better sound will come out of the plugin. And we also have the master output control. Below this, we have the graphic display, which shows you the frequency spectrum and effects that are on each partial. On the left, we have the voicing section, which is used for pitch controls and the phase of the oscillators. On the right, we have spectral clip, which limits peaks out during the filter stage. And below that, we have safe bass, which allows us to add more energy to the fundamental frequency, adding more bass. Down on the left, we have our two oscillators, both of which are mixed and routed through to filter one. We then have our two filters, which can be set at various filters such as low pass, band passes, valves, comb filters. These filters run in series. We then have the dissonance effects section, with various effects to help make the sound dissonant. At the moment it's sent to Centroid. We then have our stereo effects, which include panning effects, reverbs, and chorus. On the far right, we have the dynamic effects section, allowing us to change the dynamics of the output signal or distort the signal. At the bottom of the plugin, we have our modulation section, which includes three envelopes with echo controls, the overall echo control, two LFOs, and a sidechain control. Now for a quick demonstration of using Razer to create dubstep style mid-range bass, such as what Cenobite use in their songs Hal and Onslaught. Starting out with our blank patch, we first need to make sure that we're in mono mode, and set it to single trigger, 
due to the fact that we're only going to be triggering one note at a time. The quality needs to be set at high and the output left as standard. Next, in the voicing section, we need to lower the pitch down an octave, which will be shown here as 12. Also, turn down the glide and turn auto off. Once the patch is made, you can always go on to turn the glide on and mess around gliding between two notes. Now to set the oscillators for this patch, we're just going to be using oscillator 1 and set it to formant. Formant needs to be set just below 9 o'clock and select at 9 o'clock and the amp left on full, ratio left on 1 and just turn the colour up a tad. You should now have something that sounds like this. Now for the filter section. Filter 1 needs to be set to a low pass filter and turned on. The cutoff should then be put to the far left. Boost should be set to just over 3 o'clock. Width should be set just below 9 o'clock. And slope should be set to full. Now for filter 2, it should be a comb peak filter and you need to turn this on. The cutoff needs to be set to around 11 o'clock. We then need to go to the modulator section underneath and select LFA1. This needs to be dragged down slightly. Boost then needs to be set just past 2 o'clock. And the phase needs to be set at 12 o'clock. Again, we're going to go to the modulator section and choose LFA1. And we're going to pull this slightly to the right to around 3 o'clock. Stretch needs to be brought down to around 11 o'clock and tuned needs to be left on. You should now have something that hopefully sounds like this. We don't need any dissonant effects, so you can leave this section off. However, we do need stereo effects, so click the reverb and change it to a stereo spread. Turn this on and set the amount to full. Then set the ramp to 9 o'clock and the rate to 10 o'clock and cycles to around 2 o'clock. Then go to the limiter and change this to the clipper and turn it on. The drive needs to be set just below halfway and the fold over needs to be set to full. It should now sound something like this. Next, turn on spectral clip. Set the clip to around 11 o'clock. The pitch cut off to just about on. And the slope on full. It now sounds like this. Then go to safe base and turn this on. The amount should be set to around 10 o'clock and the base level should be set to 2 o'clock. Finally the slope should be set to around 11 o'clock and you should now have something that sounds like this. Now for the modulation section. The amp envelope should be set as so. Attack at 10 o'clock. Decay at 12 o'clock. Sustain on full. And release at 11 o'clock. Echo can be left the way it is. Now for the LFO1, change it from Hertz to beats and select the shape to the upward slope and set the speed to 12 o'clock. 
and you should have something that sounds like this. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it useful. Please like, comment and subscribe and also find our Facebook page below. Until next time.